the National Archives is now finally admitting that there are over 5,400 emails in which Joe Biden is either the sender or the recipient in which he used fake names to send government information to his son and others. The National Archives and Records Administration has admitted that it it is in possession of nearly 5,400 emails, electronic records and documents that potentially show President Biden used a pseudonym during his vice presidency. It was revealed on Monday. NARA confirmed the existence of the trove in response to a June 2022 Freedom of Information Act request by the Southeastern Legal Foundation, the New York Post reports, a nonprofit constitutional legal group. The request sought emails pertaining to the accounts of Robin Ware, Robert L. Peters, and J.R.B. Ware, pseudonyms the 80-year-old president was known to use in the White House during his time as President Barack Obama's vice president. Did you know that he was using these pseudonyms? Robin Ware, we had Vice President Robin Ware. Do you remember that? I don't. For more on this, let's turn to the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, who joins us on the phone. Tom, great to have you back with us, sir. Hey, good to be with you again, Vince. Thank you. Why do government officials use pseudonyms, fake email addresses? Well, the innocent explanation is uh, for privacy. Uh, The other explanation is uh, they want to be able to engage in conduct and not have it have it scrutinized uh, by the American people. Uh, We saw that with uh, Hillary Clinton, who had a separate email account through which she conducted all of her State Department business virtually uh, on a private system. So whether they be aliases or private email accounts, it's a way to avoid transparency and accountability. Right. But the the obligation of these government officials in in normal version of America uh, is that they work for the people and that they should be, you know, they should be proud to have their government work uh, exposed to, to public scrutiny. That's not what's happening here. Well, that's certainly not what's happening here. Um, you know, if we didn't know about these uh, alias accounts, even though the archives had them because they were capturing them because they were part of the system of records in the White House, you wouldn't know to look for him, right? You know, how do you know Robin Ware is who he is, who is actually Vice President Biden, if you're looking at a document without a, that underlying knowledge? So uh, even in the official documents, it masks uh, what's happening potentially. And in this case, though, let's be clear here. They know who the emails are. It's been out there for some time that there are these alias accounts. The Southeastern Legal Foundation began asking for this last year. It's been 14 months. They haven't gotten a document. Based on what the archives has been telling the foundation, it's not clear when, if ever, they will get the documents. And uh, now they're in federal court over it. But this is typical of the government. If you want them to give you documents due to you under law, and the archives is the archivists of the United States, the key record keeper of government, you got to sue them in federal court. It's wild. And, And I should point out another detail about these email addresses that I think is very relevant. Two of them are Gmail accounts. These are not government accounts. It's not like they were simply trying to uh, have some privacy for the vice president, didn't want him to receive too much spam or something, and they wanted him to with, giving him, give him ability to communicate uh, in, a, in, a, in, a light, in a lightly trafficked email box. That's not what this was. These were Gmail accounts. Robert Ware 456 at gmail.com. You have, uh, IR, you have JRB Ware at gmail.com. And then finally, this Robert L. Peters at PCI.gov, this very unique uh, .gov email address, and it's all built for Joe Biden to have these pseudonyms. Yeah, I conducted a Twitter poll, Vince, and uh, uh, Mr. Peters uh, is uh, seen by most Twitter users who took the poll uh, has the best Democratic candidate for president. So, you know, <laughs> Mr. Peters and is on winning. top of that... <laughs> And um, and who knows, right? And yeah. on top of that, though, you know, going back to your first question, we know that some of the shady business dealings that have been in the news were conducted uh, through these email accounts. You had some of the business dealings being sent to these bi- email accounts that now ought to be under criminal investigation. And the other big question is, given the pre- vice president's role as vice president, was classified information on these email accounts? We don't know. And we may not know until the year 2026. 
Right. Uh, because uh, depending on the records, they can keep um, uh, designate records as being uh, uh, un, un, unreleasable or secret um, up to 12 years after the presidency or the vice president's the presidency ends, which yes. would kick it all away for um, uh, up until the next administration. Yeah, they say that the archives say that there are nearly 5,200 email messages, 25 electronic files. I would assume those are email attachments or something, and 200 pages of potentially responsive records that must be processed in order to respond to your request. Um, so what we have right now is just kind of a head count, as a, according to the archives, in the number of times that these pseudonyms have appeared in their records, but we don't actually know the contents just yet, at least the ones outside of the, the confines of Hunter Biden's laptop. Now, and the process in order to get those contents also includes alerting uh, Vice President Biden, uh, I think Barack Obama, and certainly President Biden, they get to have a say as to what's released and what potentially can be withheld. So this process takes forever and a day. We've asked for Clinton administration records that we're still getting notice that there's stuff coming up. Uh, so the releases of these presidential records are notoriously slow, and especially on something that's politically sensitive. You know, the archives... Uh, it basically wants to jail Trump for delaying disclosure of records and disputing records, whether per personal or present. And here the archives are hiding records from the American people for a year plus and telling the Southeastern Legal Foundation and the American people, which they also represent, their great public interest group, uh, to go pound sand. And uh, by the way, there are 28 complex requests ahead of you, so we don't even know when we'll get to you. It's wild. And of course, the closer we get to the presidential election, the less likely they are to share any of this with us because that's the point. Uh, the, the Biden-controlled archives uh, is refusing to disclose all of this to the American public, uh, which is a real shame. And, uh, and again, more evidence of the corruption that we're all witnessing around us. If they have their way, we'll be talking about this two presidential elections from now. Yep. No question. No question. That, that tends to be the way these things go. Let me shift gears. Of course, so the special count, where's the special counsel on this? You know, are they hiding records? Where is Weiss looking at this? Is there a grand jury uh, asking for records from the Biden uh, archives uh, for what he was doing there with his son during, you know? That's a great question. The allegation is it was a racketeering operation. This is where it was likely conducted in part. That's a great question. And, and again, what is what what resource does Hunter Biden have that would enrich him? It's his father. That's that's obviously the deliverable. So therefore, uh, if you're David Weiss, if you were conduct conducting an authentic, earnest investigation, you'd be digging into these email addresses. Well, we all know what's happening there. All these overt acts, right? The new phrase of the day being uh, engaged in by the Biden gang uh, through secret email accounts. Uh, don't cause any concern for the usual suspects here in Washington, D.C. Uh, imagine if Trump uh, had uh, half a dozen email accounts he was using in the White House. And unfortunately, the media sort of gets a, a say in all of this, don't they? Because uh, if the if the legacy news outlets decide that this is deserving of attention, all of a sudden it's treated seriously or more seriously by some of these Democrat officials. Uh, I'm looking at the front page of the Washington Times today. They, they've covered it extensively. They point out all of the uh, Biden pseudonyms. They have big pictures of Biden all across the top of their front page. The Washington Post, no concern whatsoever. I, I actually did a, I just did a cursory search of the Washington Post's website. There is no coverage that I can detect of any of this. They're not covering that the current president of the United States had uh, deceptive email aliases to cover up his, his time doing supposedly the nation's business. Oh, but you will find stories about uh, the former president's height and weight. Right. Yeah. Calling into question his height and his weight. Uh, yeah. Really important stuff. Democracy dies in darkness, they say. OK, let's right. talk about Barack Obama for a moment, because I know at Judicial Watch, you've been digging into something that involves um, the people around him. We, we heard the news recently that the former White House chef who went on to become a chef, a personal chef for the Obamas in their post-presidency, uh, was found dead recently uh, uh, just uh, in the water there at Martha's Vineyard, uh, right near Obama's mansion there. There were a lot of conflicting reports coming out in those early hours. Uh, who made the call? Was he actually near the house? Were the Obamas anywhere near him? Were they even on the island? Uh, and, and there are still so many questions yet to be answered here, 
Tom Fitton. Give us a sense of, of what has piqued your curiosity and what you've learned. Well, when they don't release information about someone's death, like basic information, uh, our curiosity is piqued, as you point out. And so we started asking questions of the local police up in Edgar County, Massachusetts, which had jurisdiction. And initially, it looks like with other police departments and agencies, retrieved the body and found the body. And then he had the Massachusetts State Police uh, came in afterwards and began an investigation. And we weren't getting anything. And finally, we had the Massachusetts Secretary of State tell the Edgartown State uh, Edgartown Police Department, look, you got to respond to Judicial Watch and other requesters because we had appealed it. We finally got the documents. It shows it was the Secret Service who called 911 about the poor missing chef. So the Massachusetts State Police have told the Edgartown State Police, don't tell anyone who the Secret Service person is. Don't tell anyone who the other witness was, who was evidently was with this man. Yes. Uh, they found his clothes separate and apart from where his body was. I don't know whether he's fully clothed or not. Right. They couldn't find the body. They had to use sonar. Why was the Secret Service and why was the involvement of the Secret Service in making these initial calls withheld from the American people? Yeah, what would be the I don't understand what the security like like the normal explanation for why they don't give you information is like, well, we're trying to safeguard our procedures and the security of the of the protectee or whatever. That's irrelevant to this question. If a Secret Service agent makes a phone call to the police and says, hey, we've got a body here. Somebody's got to come out. That's not a that's not a scandal unless, of course, they're trying to cover something up. Right. And of course, you know, the, the question is and and. Uh, you know, he's uh, was a married man by all accounts. A family had a family. He wasn't with his wife out on the uh, in the pond or in the body of water. And who was the witness? Uh, there's been a report who the witness was. I don't know enough about the veracity of the report to share it with you. But obviously, it wasn't his wife. And so, you know, they're, 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 this is the today's Secret Service. If there's something that could embarrass the protectee. They'll cover it up. So in this case, you have the Obama family. Uh, um, uh, an employee dies in a way that is going to be embarrassing. And rather than just say, hey, look, the Secret Service knew he went missing immediately, knew he was with, who he was with immediately, and they've been hiding it from us for now a month. And we still don't have the Secret Service documents as to what they knew and when and what they did. And, you know, this is just so part. This is so. This is such a part. Yes. Of the problem here in D.C. with this, Hunter Biden, Biden's gone. Yes. The, the the cocaine. The poor guys getting bitten by the dogs. It doesn't matter. They get used and abused, and uh, in the case of the agency, abused to cover up sometimes unpleasant uh, aspects of what. In this case, what was happening on the Obama property? Or right, about. right, and and just to just to be clear about what Tom Fitton is running through, you've got in the Hunter Biden case, Hunter Biden and his father, they didn't have any relationship with the government at the time this all went down. It was 2018. Uh, Joe Biden was a former vice president at that point. Hunter Biden is a nobody; he's a civilian. Uh, and when his gun is thrown into a trash can by uh, Haley Biden. It's the Secret Service got involved in the investigation. They went to help handle all of this. Uh, Political reported a couple years back. And then the other piece that Tom just mentioned was this uh, cocaine investigation that they opened and closed and record speed and said, we'll never be able to get to the bottom of this. The Secret Service has become very useful in resolving political scandals for Democrats, haven't they? Yes. And, uh, and now we have the death of a, of a, an employee of President Obama, and the Secret Service evidently knew who this employee was with, the chef. What? What? Why can't we find out who it was? Some other details. So there's a suggest, and you know, and you know why, because it's potentially politically embarrassing, and like it or not, the American people have an interest when um, uh, staff of a former president die, even in accidental circumstances. Uh, and, you know, that's the reality. And the police have an obligation to be transparent. Yes. And the Secret Service have an obligation to be transparent. Sure. It's a public matter when we lose a person. Well, and this goes right to the, the point that we often hear from the left. Nobody's above the law. That's funny because if it involves Obama's house, everything gets blacked out. Like we don't get to see any of the details. 
Whereas every single other person who lives on Martha's Vineyard, and these are all by and large rich and powerful people, they are still subjected to public disclosure. If they make a 911 call, there's a record of that. The people can see it. Not so with Obama. Obama gets special privileges. Why is it a state secret who was with this chef? Yeah, good question. Why is it a state secret? As always, good questions from Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch. Always digging in. Thank you very much, Tom. Good to have you today, sir.